All right, guys, uh, we got a good show for you today. We have Josiah Davis. He goes to Taze Valley Christian. He's committed to West Virginia. Thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate you for having me. That's good. Let's get it going. Okay. Uh, we always, uh, you know, start out with like, you know, a couple would you rathers to start. Um, okay. First one, would you okay. rather reverse one decision you make every day or be able to stop time for 10 seconds every day? Be able to stop time for 10 seconds every wow. day. Um, maybe because, like, if sometimes I might think I want to do something and I stop 10 seconds just to think, like, is it smart or is it not smart and go about my day just to see if, like, the decision is right or not. But if it's not right, then I won't do it. But if it's right, then I do it. Nah, you know, sometimes, exactly. sometimes people be just doing decisions and just going without thinking. I, if I get 10 seconds to think, see if it's good or not. No, yeah, that makes 100%. A lot of people just, you know, make rash decisions on the fly, and those can be really disruptive exactly. over time. Exactly. All right, this one, this kind of just tells, you know, what kind of person you are. Uh, would right. you rather win $50,000 or let your best friend win $500,000? <laughs> I'm saying 50000 because if I win 50000 I can give it to my best friend. That's true. But what, the thing I was saying is if you and your best friend win $500,000, oh, you could ask for split friend. half of it. Oh, yeah, no, no, me and my best friend for sure. For sure. Me and my best friend wish 500000 we could split it, 250 each. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's yeah. big money, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, big money, big money out here. No, yeah, for sure. Uh, the final would you rather, right? Would you rather run at 100 miles per hour, fly at 10 miles per hour? Fly team. Yeah, for sure. Fly, cause fly I get, like, yeah, because I get to just cruise and do my thing in the air. I don't got to worry about people trying to hit me with their car or something. So. Yeah. All right. I want to get right into you and your career a little bit. Uh, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, but you're from Canada, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how did you hear about Taze Valley Christian, you know, and went going there? Um. So I'm from a small city in Canada, Kitchener, Ontario. All in stand up, you know how that goes. Um. So we, I play with an AAU program. You play Canada, and going to you play, they they find better opportunities for us for us not only in Canada but in America also. So I played in UIBL. We played in tournaments and tournaments, and one tournament it was my last tournament of the summer, and um, I seen Coach Ryan in the stands, and Coach Ryan got a contact with my parents, and then he got a contact with me, and then we started talking, and he ended up eventually asking me if I wanted to come to say that Christian and I. I was ready to leave, and I just ready to find better opportunity, and I just made my way there. No, oh, yeah, that's awesome to hear. Uh, you know, you know, COVID and stuff like shutting everything down. You know, oh, yeah. what did you do during that time, and how did you, you know, stay ready? Because you know, you got college on the horizon, yeah. but also you have the yeah. prep circuit. Yeah. Um, I want to say my biggest thing is just staying ready, is just staying mentally strong. Like some people throughout COVID, they took the time off to chill and relax. I would try to get yeah, at least two, maybe even three workouts in a day just to keep myself, like, my body in shape and my motor going for it. So when COVID ended or when it was time for us to be able to play again, I wasn't a step behind from everybody. I was probably a step ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, you know, last season you guys went 14-3. and three. Uh, How do you think the season went uh, for your team? And then, you know, you had, like, 20 points a game. How do you think it went, you know, for you personally? Um. Uh, my team was really young, and for me, it was a great building opportunity to grow not only with for myself, but with my teammates and my coaches, and just getting, getting being able to see different things from a different perspective and be taking on that leader role with my other teammate Aries. We both took on that role, and then we just decided to lead our team and make the best of every opportunity we had because the season was short due to COVID. But whatever opportunity we had, we tried to make the best of it. Yeah, I kind of, you know, went over it. I wanted to ask you this earlier. But, you know, you talked about being from Canada and stuff. You know, how did you get into basketball yourself personally and everything? Um, do you have a family member or what was it? Uh, yeah, so I really was – I was really more into football as a younger kid. And then my cousin, Jose, he started he – was, he was more of a basketball guy. And once I started realizing like, he was playing basketball, I kind of found an interest for it. And I said, well, like, this is something new. I could try it. And ever since then, it just skyrocketed. I fell in love with the sport. And, you know, it's just being able to have fun, run up and down the court and do what we have to do. I just fell in love with the sport instantly. 
No, yeah, it's awesome here. Was there a moment where you're like, you know, playing, you're like, yeah, I'm going to be the player I actually, I am now, like, you know, going to play for West Virginia. Was there a moment? Um, you asked me a couple of years. I don't think, I don't think I would say I'd be in this position, but I'm definitely worked hard to get here. Um, but there was a point in time where I said, I really want to work as hard as I possibly can to be the best I possibly can. And from there, like, I just really, took on every challenge and took it on with the best of my abilities and did what I had to do to get better every day. So. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Um, you know, talk about COVID, you know, that kind of limited, you know, recruiting for, especially my yeah. class was 21s. It screwed us yeah. over a bit. You know, can you talk about it, how it was for you and we'll get into West Virginia in a couple, like a little bit later. Uh, how was it for you? It was slow, but I was, I was hearing from a lot. I was hearing from schools, but I think West Virginia was, the most school I heard from, just making sure I was on top of my classes, making sure I was doing good, making sure like I was staying in shape. But also all the other schools, I I appreciate them always for reaching out to me. But although it was slow, schools were still trying to find ways to reach out to me. So it was it was it was slow pace, but like not too fast, but not too slow. Yeah, you know. Also, also you get to stay in state. You know. You know, talk about how excited you are, you know, play for West Virginia. You know, what kind of things you're working on right now, you know, to stay? Um, my, I'm, I'm really excited to play with West Virginia. Just uh, just being able to get up there and be two hours away. I, last year I went to the game versus Baylor and absolutely loved the atmosphere. They just built off family, they built off culture, and it was just one of the greatest feelings I had as a kid having in my life just be able to, and go somewhere and know that if I'm playing here, that I'm going to have somebody who has my back just as much as the other person. And that was the biggest thing for me. And I, I just fell in love with their atmosphere. I fell in love with the coaching staff and the chemistry that we have with each other already due to such a short period of time. And I was just ready to make that step and go there. No, yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, when you were in recruiting, you know, the process, did you ever look at like the teams and, you know, what kind of system they run? Uh, was that a, yeah. What, can yeah, you talk about um, that a little bit? Definitely. My biggest thing as a player is defense. I love to play defense. I love to get a stop, go score and come back and get another stop. So when I realized they had press Virginia, which is pressing all game yeah. and making sure like you're right up in your face, hard nosed defense, it just, it just gave me that adrenaline that I really need. Because when you get a stop, it just feels good. And then you go score, and you come back and you get another stop. It's like everybody can score the basketball, but yeah. only a certain amount of people want to play defense. So, like, knowing that they had that systematic put in for their team just gave me – even it just gave me another step closer to them and making my decision on why I wanted to go there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember I've watched quite a few games. You know, you see a lot of those games where it's like, you know, 40 to 50, you know, it's like really tight. Yeah, There's a lot yeah. of teams, you know, they're flying, you know, they're scoring 90 points a game. The big thing about West Virginia was the defense. So that's why I wanted yeah. to ask because I was, you know, watching the highlight tapes you had and it was very, you know, defense oriented, I saw. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you talk about it? Uh, this is always, you know, kind of get some funny answers with this. Uh, yeah. What was it like when you got your uh, first offer? Where were you doing? Where was it at? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh-huh. My offer was I was back home, and I was training with my uh, trainer, NS Basketball, and he was training me and a couple other of my friends, and we were training, and we went swimming after, and I was swimming, but my phone kept ringing. Yeah, and I kept wondering why my phone kept ringing, why my phone kept ringing. I'm like, okay, I'll answer later. Like somebody, somebody probably just want to do it. So I finally end up going to my phone, and it's my mom, and my host dad, and my dad, and my coach calling me. So I'm like, did I do something wrong? Like I'm trying <laughs> to figure out what's going on. So I finally get on the phone with my mom. That she's like, go call your coach, Coach Tar. And I'm like, okay. I call Coach Tar. He's like, I'm about to put you on the phone with somebody. Don't hang up the phone. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. So then he says, Coach Huggins, are you there? And he's like, yeah, I'm there. And then he's like, I'm like, okay, well, it's just the <laughs> coach probably saying he likes me, he likes my game. And he's like, well, we're opening a 2022 class, a uh, recruitment class, and we'd like to offer you. So I'm on the phone yeah. listening to him say that, and I'm jumping up and down. Like, I'm going everywhere. Yeah. I'm screaming. I'm jumping up and down. And then um, he says, yeah, yeah, we get off the phone. I jump in the pool and I'm screaming. I'm going everywhere. I'm just, just 
probably one of the happiest moments of my life, just knowing that a coach took the time to recognize my game and how much he liked it and then give me an opportunity to offer me to go to their school. So it was it was probably one of the best moments of my life, just, just being able to be so happy knowing that my hard work has paid off and people are realizing it. No, yeah, that's funny. Um, one of my offers, I'll tell you, it was a pretty funny story. I got this call from Baltimore, Maryland. Like, set, okay. it was like, you know, it was like eight times in like 10 minutes. So I thought it was like a spam bot. There, yeah. So, so I blocked the number yeah. for like a day. And then it got me thinking, I was like, what school is like recruiting me that's in Baltimore? Yeah. I look, and it's like Loyola, Maryland. So I, I go back to this number and I like look it up and it's like Coach McMullen. It was like, Loyola man, I was like, oh crap. So I had to call him back. <laughs> but I oh, blocked man. this number for like four yeah. years. And then I got my offer. I was like, oh, I thought you were a spam. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Jeez, he was really trying to get in contact with you then. So no, yeah, that was a that was a funny one. You yeah. know, you know, growing up, was there like, you know, any current or former players you looked up to, you know, modeled your game after any? Mm. Current player I really looked up to was just LeBron. Yeah. Um, I know every kid probably says that looking up to LeBron and how he's such a good player. I really looked at LeBron and his leadership aspect on how he leads his team and yeah. how he makes sure his guys are in check and how he uh, how he responds and how he talks to you, talks to them. I used to have like I used to talk to people in one way and I just thought like the one way everybody respond, but like after watching LeBron and how he talks to certain guys, you know, like there's some guys you can go at their neck. And they'll respond in a positive manner. But some guys, you have to go and tell them what they did wrong, and they'll respond in a positive manner. And just realizing, like, he did that, and that was the way of him leading his team, not only on the court but off the court, and how he carried himself. But just the reason I looked up to him the most, and he's just proven to me what, what it is to be a leader, yeah. not only on the court but off the court as well. Yeah, I you know I feel that a lot. The thing I'm looking forward to is you know seeing as like these I interview like the classes ahead is who's that yeah. next player they say instead of LeBron because we're starting to yeah. get out of that you know where LeBron was when we were in the height of our you know growing up in basketball. So that's what I'm. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, you know, over the course of your basketball career, what do you think's the best play you ever made? It doesn't have to be high school, it can pick up. What do you think? Um, I was. I want to say the seventh or eighth grade. And I was back home again, our local community center, and we were playing. And we were playing, and I was playing against one of my friends, and I just got dunked on. <laughs> but it wasn't really like a dunk on. Like, I jumped by him, and he yeah. dunked the ball. And everybody just went, ooh. So I was like, okay, well, now I have to try to get him <laughs> back. I'm going to try what I got to do. So I'm at half court, and they throw the ball half court. And it almost got stolen, but I grabbed it. Yeah. And I took two dribbles, and I came, and I, oh, my God. The whole gym went crazy. Everybody was – I dunked yeah. on him so bad. The whole gym went crazy. Everybody was running. And I was probably the best, like, one of the best moments of my life. Just, just like, because that was probably one of my first dunks in an actual, like, game, not with a referee, but, like, in a game. So, it's like, it was pretty cool. It was just, like, enjoying the moment, just being able to play with my friends and just make memories of it. No, yeah, that's awesome to hear. You know, uh, final two questions. We always finish off with them. Um, you know, what's the best piece of advice you think you ever heard to this point over the course of your basketball career? Um, oh, best piece of advice is definitely from my parents. And they say, don't worry about what everybody else has going on. Don't worry about others. God has a journey for you. And God, everybody, uh, everybody's journey is different. Yeah. So, you know, like some people like to go on social media and pay attention to what this guy got going on with this guy and this guy and this guy. They really just tell me to stay level-headed and just continue to walk on your path and continue to make your own way because God has a plan for you. And I think that's just probably the best best advice I've heard because sometimes my head gets caught up on why am I not this, why am I not yeah. that? But instead of doing why am I not this, I got to be thankful for what I have instead of what I don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Things happen for a reason, you know. We, exactly. might, not know what, we might not know why, but it happened for a reason. And, you know, exactly. You yeah. But, you know, this is probably the hardest one, you know, I asked, but when your basketball career is over, down the line, right, how do you want people to remember yourself? Uh, oh, wow, that is a hard question. Um, I definitely want people to remember me as a nice guy. Like, I'm very, I'm very a cool vibe type of guy. Like, yeah. you can talk to me, like, 
I'm very friendly. I'm very, I'm a social, social butterfly. I just want people to remember me as doing everything 110%, going hard, being the first one in the gym, the last one out, you know, just taking pride in what I have to do. Um, and just remembering me for loving the sport and loving the people and loving the things that happened to me and just being grateful and continue to be humble. That's really what I, yeah. that's what I want people to remember me for. No, that's awesome, man. Uh, you know, Josiah, I appreciate you coming on, man. One of my good friends, he uh, plays football at West Virginia, so I go to campus. Okay, well, well, there so you I'll, go. So I'll definitely, definitely have to come to a game, you know, down the line. Most you know, stay in touch for sure, man. I really appreciate you doing Oh, this. well, no doubt. Hey, Josiah Davis, just sign out, 509, stand up. You know how that goes. Appreciate you for having me, my man. Yeah, thank you, man. All right.